If today's demonstration is anything to go by, visitors will be in for a treat when Redcliffe's Kite Fest kicks off tomorrow. Kites will be on display from around the world, including several Japanese fighting kites. We have many kite battle, battle in Japan, uh, other, other shape of kite, but uh, each, each place is a different one. The kite master is also holding workshops to teach the traditional tools of the trade. For uh, the Japanese style of kite, I uh, use washi paper and bamboo. There's a small kite for kids, uh, adults. And if holding kites is too much work, now you can use a boat. New Zealand's Ultimate Kite Show and the local Coast Guard are joining forces to tow some new giant creations which are straight off the workshop floor. These New Zealand kites behind me are up to 30 metres long and this weekend will be the first time they've been flown in Australia. They'll be performing out on Bramble Bay for both days of the festival. Some of the kites on display are so large they need a smaller lift kite to get them off the ground. Kites are also arriving from interstate, like this grey yo-yo kite from South Australia. It's a little collapsible box kite, assembles itself, and you can do little tricks with it too. Phil currently holds the Guinness World Record for the largest kite ever made, but was unable to bring it to the festival. The luggage allowances on the, on the uh, airlines these days means it's a bit harder to <laughs> take a lot of the kites. But why are kites so popular? One of the best things about kites is once you've bought your kite, there's no more expense, the wind's free. The festival runs at Redcliffe all weekend. Amy DeGraff, QUT News.